Welcome back. If you followed along with the last video, you should have a Sonoff Basic set up with Tasmoda firmware. With that in hand, you're ready to connect the Sonoff to your existing light switches and get it set up in Home Assistant. This is the fun part. With your USB adapter and your Sonoff still connected to your computer, you can find out if your firmware flashing worked. Go into your router, look under Connected Devices for a new device. Unless you change the project name significantly, it should say Sonoff something. Now copy and paste the IP address of that new device into your browser. If the firmware setup worked correctly, you'll get the main menu of the Tasmoda firmware that's now running on your Sonoff. Now while we're here, looking at the Tasmoda main menu, we can get our Sonoff ready to become a light switch. Click Configuration, then Configure Module. Then in the drop-down menu for GPIO 14, pick 09 Switch 1, click Save. You'll get a message about the Sonoff restarting. In a couple seconds, you can click Main Menu and you should get back to the main screen. That's how you make GPIO 14 into a switch. Now if you're using a rocker switch, like your standard wall switch, that's all you have to do. You're ready to go. But if you want to be a little more tricky and use a push button, then there's one more thing you need to do. Go back to the main menu, click Console, and then in this text box, type Switch Mode 1 Space 4 and hit Enter. That command changes the function of GPIO 14 so that when you connect a push button switch, if it's on and you push the button, it'll go off and stay off. And if it's off and you push the button, it'll go on and stay on. You don't have to restart the Sonoff for the switch mode command to take effect. It starts working as soon as you hit enter. If you're interested in really getting into what the Tasmoda firmware can do, there's a whole list of commands that you can type in at the console and do all kinds of stuff. Now you can solder a wire to GPIO 14 and to the ground pin. So we've got wires soldered to GPIO 14 and the ground. And we just run those to our standard rocker switch. Now we're ready to put it in the wall. Make sure your breaker's off. There's a few different wire arrangements that you might find inside your switch box. If you see this inside your switch box, you're in trouble because you have to have wires coming from the circuit breaker as your input and then wires going to the lights as your output. If all you have are the two wires that go from the lights to your switch, you won't be able to connect to Sonoff. Sorry. Go find another switch. Hopefully when you open your switch box, you see something like this. This is the most straightforward connection. Most likely, the wires coming into the switch box from the bottom are going to be the wires that are coming from the circuit breaker, and the wires going out the top of the switch box are going to be the ones that go to the light. If you're not sure, or maybe if both pair of wires are coming from the top of the box or the bottom of the box, and you can't really tell which one's going to the circuit breaker and which one's going to the lights, it's okay. Just guess and connect two of them to the input and two of them to the output. It won't hurt your Sonoff if you've connected them backwards. It just won't work. The third arrangement that you might see is pretty similar to the second, but it can seem a bit more confusing because you'll have a bundle of white wires and a bundle of black wires. Then you'll have one black wire coming from the bundle and going to the switch. The black wire that comes from the bundle of other black wires is gonna be your hot wire that's coming from your circuit. And then another black wire that comes into the box going alone to the switch that's not coming from the bundle. That's the wire that goes to the lights. This is pretty typical of what you'll probably see inside your switch box. Okay, now we've identified this wire as going to the lights. So if you look inside there, you can see which Romex this one's going to. It's this one up here. So now we want to trace the neutral that comes out of there. And those two are going to be the ones on the output side of our Sonoff. It's November. Why am I sweating? This and this are our input main hot circuit that's coming into this room that's powering the lights and plugs. And then these two are gonna be the output from our Sonoff and they are just going to the lights. All right, we're gonna connect short flexible wire to this more firm solid wire because flexible wire is easier to work with. Now these other ones. So this is the input side. This is the output side. This is the neutral on top. This is the black on the bottom. This is the input line side. Okay, nice and tight. This is the input 
neutral side. Dangling here is part of our switch. This is the output neutral. And this is the output line or hot. Okay, you can always go back and double check with your cover. Output's going to the switch, input's coming from the main circuit. I definitely would not put this back in the box without covering it with something. You may be able to put the plastic cover back on, but it does stick out a little bit. So I just like to wrap it in electrical tape. All right, it's time for the test. Let's go turn the circuit back on. Here's our switch. Yeah! Woo! Start mashing things back in here. Hey, circuit breakers are in the basement, so I'm winded again. Okay, I think I got it. Ready? Okay, so toward this apart, just to get this out of the way, put these over here. We've got here is our power coming in. Uh, so I tied in a flexible wire, so much easier to work with. Flexible wires to the Sonoff, and the Sonoff case was not gonna fit. So once I connected everything, I just wrapped it in electrical tape. So this is the input, and this is the output. This goes up to the light, the porch light outside. And then this is our regular switch, and it's just connected to the regular switch poles with the small wires off of the Sonoff. It's all connected. I'm about to power it up and it'll either explode or it'll work. Porch light is off. This is the switch. Porch light's now on. It says it's on. Turn it off. Porch light's off. Now we just gotta get it all to fit back in the box. Okay, got it all to fit. Uh, you can barely see the Sonoff board back behind that switch and then I'll put this one back in and then that's it, it'll all fit. Once you've got that all hooked up and tested and stuffed back in the box, you're ready to go set it up in Home Assistant. Go to your Home Assistant configuration file and put this here. Whatever you put for the name is what will show up next to the button on your main Home Assistant page. The middle section of the command and state topics is the project name that you used when we set up Tasmoda. Remember, for each Sonoff, you need to set a different project name. And this is why, because each switch has to have its own unique MQTT topic names. That's it. Save it, check your config, restart Home Assistant, and it should work. Now you can control your lights using MQTT with Home Assistant or anything else, but you still have the same functionality at the light switch. And it looks like every other light switch in your house, because not everybody wants a glow-in-the-dark 3D printed light switch. The next couple of videos are gonna be more about holiday LEDs. The one I'm most excited about is comparing 12 volt and five volt lights. Turns out there's a pretty important difference. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Adios.